The Wall Street Journal reports that President Biden could soon roll back tariffs on some imports coming to us from China. Gordon Chang joins me now. Biden could decide this week on these tariffs. Do you think he should lift tariffs? He's trying to say that uh, it'll help our inflation here. Should he do this? Absolutely not, Stuart. First of all, his belief that if you remove the tariffs, prices will come down on goods is based on a fundamentally flawed assumption on how prices adjust. Sellers do not drop their prices when their costs go down. Sellers drop their prices when demand goes down. So this is completely unrelated. Also, you know, when these tariffs went on in place in 2018, China actually borne about 80 percent of the cost by subsidizing export factories. So if you remove the tariffs, what you're really doing is helping the Chinese central government. Yeah. And also, with these tariffs, they have encouraged companies to move back to the U.S. As soon as Biden started saying, look, we're not going to have these, we're going to remove tariffs, then manufacturers stopped their plans to onshore. So if you got a chip shortage or you got anything else, the best thing to do is to say, look, we're going to raise these tariffs so that people will bring back their manufacturing to the U.S. Good. This is just very simple stuff to understand. Biden administration doesn't understand Econ 101. I, I do want to talk to you about something that's dear to my heart, and that is Hong Kong. Xi Jinping went there, I believe, last week, I think it was, first time outside the mainland. Uh, I think that the Chinese communists have crushed Hong Kong, and I think it's a crying shame, because it used to be a beacon of freedom and light in Asia, and now it's gone. Uh, I'm, I feel strongly about this, and I think you do too. Well, I feel strongly about what the Chinese have done uh, to end autonomy there. But we've got to remember that what we have seen in Hong Kong over the course of decades is an insurgency. And insurgencies can melt away and disappear for decades, and then they come back. That's the pattern in Hong Kong. 2003, you have the big protests over the national security law. Yeah. They disappear until 2014 when you have the umbrella protests. They disappear until 2019 when you have the protests yeah. over the extradition bill. Yes, they have, you know, China has been able to stop dissent for now. But I actually think that the people in Hong Kong, they don't want the Chinese there. And sometime in the future, and I don't know when, Stuart, but sometime we're going to see again the people in Hong Kong say, we don't want the Chinese here. It'd be very tough for them to say that. Because right now. you pop up nowadays in Hong Kong and you're crushed. You'll go to prison. Absolutely. But we also know in Chinese history that, you know, Hong Kong is one of these peripheral areas to China. And we know through Chinese history that the country expands and then it starts to contract. And you're starting to see problems in peripheral areas in China, not just Hong Kong. So this is a decades, centuries long process. Who knows what's going to happen? But, you know, I agree with you. If you protest today in Hong Kong, you will get in prison. You probably will be, get killed because we've seen this in, the, in, in recent uh, years. But nonetheless, Stuart, people there are insurgents and they're freedom loving insurgents. And that is a wonderful thing. Thanks for telling us that, Gordon. We appreciate it. And by the way, happy birthday. You're one of the but few guests on this program who could not be my son. Ha! Gotcha. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks.